Today, household wealth up and down. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to the latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The ABS released their latest household finance and wealth statistics to March 2019 today. Household wealth per capita decreased for a third consecutive quarter to $404,556 and falling by $1,511. This follows a record $9,992 fall in the household wealth per capita in the previous quarter. And it reflects the continued holding losses on residential land and dwellings. The falls in property values were offset by rises in stock markets for those with shares and superannuation. But residential land and dwellings experienced real holding losses for the fifth consecutive quarter. And the household debt to asset ratio increased from 19.3% to 19.4% as the growth in household debt, which was up 0.7%, outweighed the increase in total assets up 0.3%. And the mortgage debt to residential land and dwellings ratio increased from 28.1% to 29%. And that's the largest quarterly increase since September. 2011. Now, the fall in gross disposable income was driven by falls in compensation of employees and gross mixed income. Household wealth, or net worth, increased overall by 0.2% in the March quarter, and that's a positive turnaround from the decline of 2.1% recorded in the previous quarter. It was explained by a rebound in the Australian stock market which drove increases in real holding gains on financial assets, $147 billion, recovering the real holding losses of $146 billion in the previous quarter. Positive revaluations on reserves of pension funds, superannuation funds, accounted for 68% of holding gains on household financial assets, reflecting the 70% of investment of total pension fund assets in shares, which in turn was helped by the rebound in the Australian stock market. But residential land and dwellings experienced real holding losses for a fifth consecutive quarter and offset the gains on financial assets during the quarter. Through the year, household wealth decreased 0.7%, reflecting continued falls in residential property prices. And the percentage point contribution to the change in household wealth were financial assets, 1.8%, Financial liabilities down 0.2 percentage points. And land and dwellings down 1.5 percentage points. And the rise in the ratio reflects the fall in the value of residential land and dwellings down 2.6%, together with an increase in mortgage debt at 0.6%. And it's the combination of those two factors which has degraded the household balance sheet. The household debt to liquid asset ratio reflects the ability of households to quickly extinguish debts using liquid assets like currency, deposits and short and long term debt securities and equity. The household debt to liquidity ratio decreased from 113.9% to 112.5%. The decrease in the debt to liquid assets ratio indicates growth in household liquid assets at 2% outweighed growth in household debt at 0.7%, and growth in liquid assets was driven by increases in equity and deposits of 3.2% and 1% respectively, while the slow growth in debt reflects weak growth in household loan borrowing. Now let's look at the wealth effect. Household net savings increased $6.8 billion to $9.5 billion, driven by a decrease in final consumption expenditure at $17.7 billion. That means we're spending less. And it was partially offset by a decreasing gross disposable income at $10.6 billion and an increase in consumption on fixed capital goods at $0.3 billion. The fall in gross disposable income was driven by falls in compensation of employees 
and gross mixed income. So this again reflects the very low levels of income growth that we've seen recently. And as I say, just to reiterate, household wealth per capita decreased for a third consecutive quarter to just over $404,000. And that was a fall of $1,500 from the previous quarter. And that follows a record fall of $9,990 the previous quarter, when, of course, shares dropped as well as property. So in summary, household wealth per capita continues to grind lower, thanks to the falls in property values and also the slowing momentum in mortgage lending. It was somewhat offset by those households who enjoyed growth in their superannuation balances and in their share prices, thanks to the high equity markets since the start of the year. But despite that, because incomes are flat in real terms, and because households are highly leveraged thanks to the high mortgages, overall net worth is still declining for most households. And whilst more broadly we can see some improvement in government finances, the truth is that the household sector and the massive debts that we see will continue to bear down on both households in particular and on the broader economy simply because households do not have spending capacity at the moment. And of course, going forward, the key question will be to what extent the tax cuts, if and when they come through, and lower interest rates turn this around. But a quick calculation on the back of an envelope suggests that even if rates were cut two or three times, it's unlikely to really make a significant difference for many households. The level of debt in the system is just so high and households are so leveraged that we think this will be a drag on the economy for some time to come. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.